And now it's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, a person that you probably will recognize very quickly once I bring him to your attention. But how many of you have heard of something called the Ethernet switch? If you could please raise your hands. How many use the Ethernet switch? I'll, I'll guarantee you everyone uses the Ethernet switch at home or in the office. Guaranteed. Either it's built into your routers or built into your modems and everything. But wherever you're working, you ha if you're working with data, you're using the Ethernet switch. Something that this entrepreneur invented over 30 years ago in 1987. And he then went on to uh, found a company called uh, Kalpana Networks, and I don't know why he named it Kalpana Networks. Uh, I think his wife is named Kalpana. Could that be the reason, Vinod? So that's the company that he founded. He sold it to Cisco in 1994. Very successful company. An interesting story about his background prior to his becoming an entrepreneur. He graduated from IIT Kharagpur in 1967, did not come to the US until 1982. And what was he doing in India? So he was actually developing companies in India. So he built the India's first semiconductor diode company that was started by an entrepreneur who actually fabricated all of the equipment for manufacturing himself, did not buy a single thing. He really was a Gandhian, built in Sudeshi style. And then he went on to make a calculator company that was very successful as well. I, I could spend hours talking about his story, but I think it's best that if I let him tell you his story, and what I want to emphasize to you is he has made incredible contributions to our society already through his entrepreneurship, through the Ethernet switch, and other things that he has done in his life. But what is equally impressive to me is how he got to that stage of being able to make those contributions and what happened in his life prior when he went to engineering school. How did he get there? And for that, I'd like you to welcome Vinod Bharadwaj. Oh my God, such a lovely introduction, Prabhu. <laughs> and uh, thank you for giving me the honor of speaking here. I'm really keen to speak here. You know, my story is very relevant to FFE. So I'd like to start off with a John Adams quote, which I think many of you will, will be able to relate to. I must study politics and war that my sons may have liberty to study mathematics and philosophy. My son ought to study mathematics and philosophy, geography, natural history, naval architecture, navigation, commerce, and agriculture in order to give their children a right to study painting, poetry, music, architecture, statuary, tapestry, and porcelain. You know, John Adams, John Adams, like many of us here, knew that he must, he must act in the interest of his future generation so that they, in turn, could lead a more fulfilling life. Each generation strives to leave the world better than that which they received from the previous generation. This has been happening since the early days of human existence. What would someone from those later generations feel when they were studying poetry or music? I believe they would feel really lucky that they could pursue their passions as compared to the generation before. This then means that luck isn't predetermined or purely chance as we tend to believe. People create luck for others whether that's through the collective knowledge of the previous generation or through individual acts of kindness. In my own life, success came from being able to acquire knowledge. First at IIT and later at a company, Excellent, in the US. How I acquired this knowledge is my story of individual acts of kindness that have masqueraded as luck throughout my life. I migrated from India in the year 1982, 
having worked in industries unrelated to computer networking. There was no way I could get a job in Silicon Valley because my knowledge was 15 years of obsolete. And you know how much is 15 years in the field of computer networking. Uh, uh, but my luck saved me uh, because my friend Inder Singh gave me a job at Excellent for the sole reason that we were buddies at IIT. It was simply a gift of friendship and benevolence. Excellent, in my opinion, was the most advanced networking company of its time, and I was lucky to be employed in that company. I consider my time at Excellent essentially as a three-year graduate course in networking, because I never went to school in this country otherwise. I studied Conwell Reiki's amazing design again and again and again. Initially, I used to have so much problem. Everything used to go over my head. But I tried and tried, and finally I understood every little detail. Uh, there was a person by the name of Dwayne Murray who taught me logic design. He stood by the side of my uh, computer, and you know, literally in 15 minutes, he uh, told me how to do state machine design. Amazing guy. By the time I le left Excellent, I knew everything there was to know about Ethernet. And again, that's my luck, to be able to know so much in so little a time. That was the biggest gift Inder gave me. He also did angel investment in my company, which he convinced me to name Kalpna, my wife's name. I didn't decide it, he decided it. <laughs> I initially opposed it on the ground that it is public display of uh, affection, you know. <laughs> But it turned out to be a great decision as it scored me some brownie points with my wife <laughs> uh, who had to put up with me leaving a <laughs> who had to put up with me leaving a salary to pursue my own startup and making her wait for dinner for hours after promising to be back home in a few minutes. Through my journey with the ether switch at Kalpana, another person integral in my success by the venture capital is Bruce Dunleavy from Benchmark Capital. We tried to get him, but he was out traveling, so he couldn't come. He was persistent in trying to convince me to accept venture finance. I was not interested in outside funding because of my bad luck of having been cheated by an investor in India. Bruce told me I was naive for trying to run a business with such huge potential with essentially no money. He was able to see more potential in this technology than I could. Consider the fact that after 30 years, this product has reached every home with a Wi-Fi router. He convinced me to think big. I am really grateful to him. These people I have mentioned thus far were instrument instrumental in the success that has brought me to be asked to be a speaker at this occasion, and I'm really honored for that. But the road to IIT was essentially impossible for someone like me. My family of six brothers and sisters lived with our mother in Firozpur, a small, small town in Punjab. I was seven when my father died of tuberculosis, after three years of illness, which exhausted our savings. With no earning member, and no income, there was no way I could dream of becoming an engineer. And that too from IIT Kharagpur, and come to America. But luck would help me. In ninth grade, I became friends with Jatinder Sagal through the playful competitiveness of who would be the top of the class or an exam. Actually, he is he's here with me on my uh, table. I have known him from the age of 13. <laughs> what? <laughs> so that, there is a story there how I got together with him. You know, I used to talk a lot about him. Uh, you know, and my kids uh, said, you know, you have this friend you talk about so much. Where is he now? I said, he is in Canada. I used to have his address in his 20 years. You know, who knows about it? So they forced me to uh, use the old address. And I sent a letter, you know, this was not the internet days, you know. So, and the, uh, he had actually moved two houses in between. 
So this guy again, act of kindness by this guy, this person, he talks to the lawyer of the guy who basically sold this house and and then he went to the next person to find out where he sold the next house and he sent the letter to him and I'm really happy to meet you after. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have so much initiative. I don't know why they do such good things for people, you know, without ex accepting, expecting anything in return, you know. Okay, so uh, I got interested in electronics because of Jatinder. His father was in charge of the telephone system in Firozpur, my hometown. And will you believe that 1950 there used to be a phone system in Firozpur. Jatender was very interested in making all kinds of things using his father, father's store which had items like headphones, magnets, animal wire and all kinds of things. All, all the material which I could not have had access to came from him. I made a, a crystal set radio receiver. Uh, you guys are too young to know about a crystal. It used to be a passive radio receiver with no uh, components that require electricity actually. So you can still find on Amazon if you really look into it. I did, you know, it's just a fun project, hobby project. And you know, all these components like headphones, animal wire and capacitors came from Jatinder's father's store. At one time, Jatinder and I were trying to make a toy airplane running on batteries. Can you believe that? That is 1950s. After having been successful at making an electric motor. When a battery operated drone finally arrived after 50 years, Chatinder sent me a newspaper cutting with a picture of the drone saying, we used to be Sheikh Chilis, now we can call ourselves visionaries. <laughs> because of this hobby, I became friends with Maharaj Birmani, who had similar interests like making transfer radios and walkie-talkies. We all became obsessed with electronics at a time with no one uh, at, a, at a time when no one knew what it was. It was the 1950s. My friendship with Birmani was the most incredible piece of luck that allows me to be here today. My education stopped at the age of 16 because I had to find a job to earn for the family. My friend Maharaj Birmani had gone to IIT Khadakpur in the meantime and came back to Firozpur during his summer vacation. I met him and he asked me what I was doing. I told him I was learning shorthand to become a stenographer. He asked me, why don't you come to IIT? I thought it was a dumb question, you know. <laughs> I couldn't even afford to attend my local college and where I could go on a buy and he wanted me to travel to the other of India and live in a hostel. Before I could say anything, he said, just clear the entrance exam and my father will take care of all your expenses. <laughs> to this day, I can't believe it really happened. He went back to Kharagpur but now I need money for the entrance exam fee. Travel expenses to the test center, accommodations and some books. All of it had to be done by a certain date because there's an entrance exam uh, application fee date. You know. We needed 30 rupees. My mother said it would take her a few months to save this much money, not right now. We had already exhausted all, exhausted all our resources trying to stay alive. She tried for some time to raise the money, but could not. She finally got an idea. She suggested that I should ask for a loan from Jatinder's parents. I, but Jatinder was in IIT, Madras. Fortunately, his parents were still in Fir Firozpur. So I went to ask for a loan of 30 rupees from Jatinder's mom. She immediately gave me the money with no hesitation. And you might wonder 
why I am making such a big deal out of this 30 rupees, such a rich crowd here, 30 rupees is nothing, right? You might say, you know, I'm just making a bit. But only I know its worth. Only I know how difficult it was to raise that money. Uh, only I know what dubte ko tinke ka sahara means. Several months later, after saving up that money, I went back to Jatinder's mom to return the money. She hugged me and said, I gave you the money as I would give to my son, because you are my son too. If you need any help, you know where to come. I passed the entry exam and went to IIT and my friend's father So I passed the entry exam and went to IIT and my friend's father, Colonel Birmani, paid all the expenses for four years. And you know the expenses mean not just for the tuition, for travel and for my clothes and everything. You know, we had practically no money actually. So just just four years of education changed my life. Can you believe just four years of education changed my life? Colonel Birmani even had a really well paying job lined up for me even before I was back from IIT. It was a really innovative company where I acquired more knowledge. I really learned a lot there. Now I have this regret that I tried to hide from everyone at IIT that my friend Maharaj's father was supporting me. And Maharaj also was nice enough to not tell anyone that he's supporting me. He never told anyone. The least I could have done is compliment Birmani family for the generosity in front of others. I feel so, so ashamed. If only there was a way for Colonel Birmani to listen to what I am saying right now. I am really sorry. The reason for trying to hide is because of the way some Indians treat poor people. Once people find out you are poor or have much less money than they have, they treat you differently. We never thought we were poor. We simply had no money and no income. That must sound really strange to you. But it's not the same as having no money. Being poor is not the same as having no money. Poor people accept their fate. Poor people do not strive to have the next generation be better than the current one. Poor people living around us send their kids to work rather than sending them to school. They didn't believe in education. I didn't stop my education because my mother did not value education. In fact, she would rather go hungry then give up on her children's education. And many times she did. In his last days, my father was less worried about his death and more about the fact that his children would not be able to get education. He often said, Mere ka kya hoga? Mere ka kya hoga? What is the future of my kids? On his deathbed, he asked my mother to promise that she will educate the kids. She will not abandon the kids. He was worried she might lose the will to live or give up trying to educate them. He asked her to be brave, not knowing how. He asked her to promise that she would never make them wash dishes. In halwai shops. A famous comedian once said that tragedy plus time is comedy. So my daughter jokes about my da days of poverty, but always says thank you. So my daughter jokes about my days of poverty, but always says 
when you when you were garib she never uses the word garib because that is going to make me unhappy i guess it will take some more time for it to become comedy for me so let me tell you a story that my brother told me just a few weeks back about how some people in india treat poor so before uh, taking up this speech deciding to speak i uh, spoke to my uh, brother because we have never actually discussed the topic because why think about unpleasant thing we have always avoided thinking about the unpleasant past so i said okay let me talk to my brother and for the first time i heard this story and i had to put it in so my brother was 14 my father had to be taken to an x ray lab my father was extremely weak so he could not go to the lab in a rickshaw so my brother took him in a tonga so he could lie down a long and expensive ride that tired him there was a line of people waiting for the for their x ray everyone was sitting but my father was lying on the bare floor because he was so weak the doctor would come out and take the next patient but ignore my father my father's turn never came and the lab closed for the day no reason was given so they came back and started early the next day my father was even more tired after a second day of the long tonga ride they again waited for a whole day but then their turn never came at the end of the day the doctor came out and yelled at my father in such an insulting tone and said abey to phir aa gaya kahin aur ja treating him like a bhikari i assume my brother was not well dressed or had not come to the doctor through some connection so he was turned away without the necessary x ray my father cried and so did my brother but my brother still carries the pain after almost 70 years he narrated this story to me on phone from india and cried again after saying this sentence my brother had never heard such insulting words from anyone maybe the poor people are used to this but he was not for one thing why should even peer poor, poor people be treated like this and on top of that our father was so sick how could people be so cruel my brother asked me what did we do wrong to this per- uh, person that he treated us like that it's a question that has plagued him throughout his life my answer was very pretty simple that he was just trying to maximize his revenues since my father was weak he would need a stretcher and some men and would also need far more set up time his expensive machine on which he could make 40 rupees per x-ray which was a lot of money in those days could do several x-rays in the in that time i told him about the ceo who raised the price of a life saving drug dera prime from a few dollars to 750 dollars as a comparison the doctor named raja ram who tried his best to say my father was such a kind person he was our family doctor for many many years even after my father passed away he even did surgery surgery for one of my brothers keeping him in his nursing home he came to our home at 2 am when my father suddenly vomited blood and my brother ran to him for help he would come on his own several time just to see how my father was doing he trained my brother about how to make sure no one gets infected especially when my mother had to sweep his vomit in fact my father contracted tb for the sole reason that he went to see a neighbor out of courtesy either my father did not know that the neighbor had tb or did not know how infectious it was ignorance was the cause of our misery and the knowledge that the doctor provided us saved us all none of us infected tb as a result dr rajaram 
told my brother about a miracle medicine called antibiotics that would be available very soon. He tried his best to get it from somewhere. But my father passed away. Just six months before, antibiotics became readily available. And he did all this for 15 years without charging a penny. His name, Raja Ram, says it all. My brother was young at that time. At the time of our father's death. So he never valued his kindness as much as he should have. As he grew older, it bothered him. He decided to travel to Firozpur from Delhi just to see the nursing home where Dr. Rajaram used to practice as a form of catharsis. He spoke to the young doc doctor who now ran the practice with tears in his eyes. He asked what had happened to Dr. Rajaram's family and how could he find them. He wanted to thank the family for what the doctor had done to them, to us. To his surprise, it was his son only that had become a renowned doctor, just like his father, practicing in the same building. My brother then told him the story of his father's kindness. He had some relief from his interaction, but not enough. He still regrets not having been wise enough to meet the doctor before his death, to convey how much what he did meant to our family. After coming to US, I lost touch with Colonel Bimani on purpose. His son has done so well in India and I had re restarted my life in the US. I was embarrassed to tell him that I had not reached anywhere in my life. That after the IIT education, I was still working as a lowly technician in US. Only after I became well off did I go to India to meet him. He was in Shivananda Ashram in Rishikesh. He had Alzheimer's. He did not recognize me. He was caressing my hand and smiling. But the more he smiled, the more I cried. I was feeling so guilty for not coming in time to show him that his health had paid off, that I was a supatra worth his kindness. He would have been so proud of me. I realize that in life, it's not always possible to pay someone back. Even with all the money that both his son and I collectively had made, we could not help him. We all have a debt to the early generation who improved our lives. This debt to the past generation simply cannot be paid back because they are long gone. But we can pay it forward to our future generation, just as John Adams did. And by far the best way to serve society is to help educate the next generation, which would advance humanity's knowledge even further, adding to our prosperity and reducing our pain and suffering. I decided to speak at this event so you could see a real life example of how many individuals along the way have in educating me and transform my life. Foundation for Excellence is doing exactly what I was lucky to have received in my life and that is why I support it. What is so unique about FEP is that your donation today will directly go to fund scholarship and not be used for administrative expenses since Prabhu Goel is personally spending all these expenses. Not many foundation can claim that. My brother went looking for the family of Dr. Rajaram, and I have been looking for the family of all the numerous kind-hearted people who have helped me throughout my life. In Prabhu Goel and his foundation, I found that family.
you are all part of the same family. It's people like you who have transformed my life. I thank you for that. And in Foundation for Excellence, I found a way to pay it forward since I could never pay it all back. Thank you. Thank you.